le futur proche. So basically, if you want to translate it directly, it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with aller at the present form followed by the infinitive so the basic form of the verb okay so like in English you would say I am going to travel for instance in French we would say je vais voyager okay so remember first aller that you conjugate at the present form and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form okay so first of course we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it but still I think that it is really important to see how it goes so we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form okay first person here je vais remember final s not pronounced je vais okay tu vas same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il, elle va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal on, really in your nose, okay? On. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful nous allons nous allons okay same thing here vous allez vous allez all right remember classic ending for vous a z okay but then when you combine these two letters you get the sound a okay allez and then vous allez all right and the last persons ils elles vont ils vont Elles vont. Okay, remember, final T not pronounced, so you get this O-N nasal here. On vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont. Elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Famille. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new. Okay, because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine. So, une nouvelle maison, a new house. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Okay, and then, il, elle, va partir, partir is to leave. Okay, pour, pour means for, pour, un, En. One year. Un an. Okay? So I will make the liaison just to to make it more more uh, normal after. Okay, but I just want to divide here. Un an. Okay? So let's read it normally now. Il va partir pour un an. Okay? So you can hear that now I make this link between the two. Un an. Un an. So no break between the two. Un an. Okay? Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Okay? Then for nous. Nous allons chanter. Chanter means to sing. Okay? Sept chansons. So remember, sept, feminine form of ce, this. 
Okay, chanson, song, and as chanson is feminine, so you should put this, this form here at the feminine. This, okay? Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Mm -hmm. And then for vous, vous allez adorer, so adorer to adore, to love a lot, <laughs> ce film, okay? Ce, so you see now this, okay? But then it's the masculine form because film, film here is masculine. Ce film, this movie, okay? Vous allez adorer ce film. Vous allez adorer ce film. And the last one. Ils vont boire, boire is to drink, un café, a coffee. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Okay, so let's repeat everything again. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Vous allez adorer ce film. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon B. And in this, in, in this lesson, sorry, we'll uh, try to work on the le genre des mots, so the gender of the words because normally that's uh, something a bit difficult uh, for um, students to know or to remember the gender of the words so normally what I tell them is to try to memorize try to remember the gender when they discover or when they see a new word but I know it's not uh, it's not easy okay so in this lesson we'll try to see actually a few endings that give you some useful tips and uh, well, well, we'll focus only on the on the feminine feminine words, uh, and we'll start right now. <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, when you see words that are ending with this e o n, so you can be almost. <laughs> this is quite important. Never say always uh, when you talk about Fran French language language because you always find some uh, exceptions. Okay, so uh, I won't say always. I will say in most of the cases. Okay, when they end with e o n. Okay, um, they in most of the cases they will be feminine. Okay, so for instance here la libération or then la nation. Okay. Other ending is T. So when a word is finishing or ending with T, like that, la rapidité. Rapidité means uh, speed. And then la santé, health. Okay. In this case, you can be almost sure that these words will be feminine. Okay. When they're ending with URE, UR, okay, la peinture. Paint, la voiture, car, okay, so they are feminine. And then when they're ending with S, like that, E, S, S, E, so for instance, la politesse, la vitesse, vitesse means uh, speed, okay. So these words are feminine and these endings are classical ending for feminine form, okay, so let's see them. One more time, la libération, la nation, la rapidité, la santé, la peinture, la voiture, la politesse, la vitesse. Okay, so let's see a few more. So, still for the feminine form. So, when you will have a word ending with this E, double T, E, et, Okay, for instance, la chaussette, la roulette, so they will be feminine, okay, chaussette means sock, and then roulette, well, it's the same, the thing you will find in casinos, and then when they're ending with ie, like here, 
okay so basically you don't pronounce the the e uh, okay so it will be only the sound e okay for instance la vie life okay la partie the part okay so there will be feminine as well okay and then words ending with e uh, accent aigu and then e uh, here okay remember this final e uh, is not pronounced so you will have this e remember uh, accent aigu it's a sound okay la poupée the doll l'arrivée the arrival okay la poupée l'arrivée so feminine as well uh, in that case remember that normally it should be la arrivée but as arrivée as usual you know start with the a vowel then a uh, is disappearing and then you just put this apostrophe okay and then words ending with ud like that u d e ud okay are normally in most of the cases feminine la gratitude well if i my understanding is correct it is exactly the same in english la gratitude and then same thing here latitude latitude okay so let's repeat them one more time la chaussette la roulette la vie la partie la poupée l'arrivée la gratitude latitude okay i know it's not the key it's not the magic key that will help you forever and uh, that will uh, give you all the time the, the 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 correct gender of the words but still you've got some you've got some tips now okay it was leçon b okay remember that i've been doing uh, many lessons so they can be found there on youtube.com slash imagier okay and then the website is here imagier.net you can find more material there have a nice day bye bye l'article partitif so what's l'article partitif well basically it's when you want to say that you want some sugar for instance so you don't want to specify the quantity okay just want to say that you want some but you don't want to say one two three okay then as usual we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form okay so for the masculine form it will be du okay du simple thing d u this is u this is d du all right and then for the feminine form it will be de la okay de la all right masculine form du feminine form de la all right let's see few examples now je bois boire, boire is to drink okay so je bois du café all right so you can see the difference here it would be possible to say je bois un café okay in that case you would translate it je bois un café by i drink one coffee or i drink a coffee Okay. In that case, when you put this du café, so first you put the masculine form because café is masculine, okay? And then you want to say, you don't want to specify the quantity, you want to say, I drink some coffee, okay? Je bois du café, okay? Uh, the other option as well would be to say, je bois le café, so if you want to put this article défini but then you would have to put more information after le café de ma mère the coffee of my mother if you want okay so in that case in this lesson we'll only focus on l'article partitif so it's some okay je bois du café all right let's see another option tu voudrais so i wanted to introduce this voudrait form okay so it's coming from vouloir vouloir is to want okay but then it's not the present form here the classic present form it's the conditionnel form okay so it's the polite form that normally we should use so i would like to have you know you don't say tu veux you don't say you want because 
it is uh, it is too 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 strong and too direct. So normally we tend to use this conditional form. Uh, so tu voudrais, you would like to have, and then salad, okay, and it's feminine. So you should put the feminine form of this partitif. So de la salad. So some salad, okay. Tu voudrais de la salad. All right. Let's see another example here. Nous mangeons. So manger is to eat, okay, and that's the, the form for nous, okay. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Gâteau is cake, okay, and it's masculine, so du gâteau. We eat some cake. Vous voulez, okay, so vouloir again, all right, to want, okay, but here it's the present form, okay. Do you want, vous voulez du Fromage, cheese, du fromage, so some cheese, and it's a question, vous voulez du fromage? Okay, and the last example here. So I've been putting this il y a, we'll see that a bit later in this unit, but it will come. Il y a means there is, okay, il y a, there is, okay. Il y a de la neige, neige is snow, okay. Par terre, on the ground. Par terre. So, there is snow on the ground. Il y a de la neige par terre. Okay, so let's repeat all these sentences. The first one. Je bois du café. Second one. Tu voudrais de la salade. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Vous voulez du fromage? It's a question. So I've been insisting a little bit too much, maybe. Let's do it one more time. Vous voulez du fromage? And the last one. Il y a de la neige par terre. Pourquoi? Why? Pourquoi? Why? Okay. So, if you ask a question with pourquoi? Why? Normally, the answer that you will have will start with whether parce que, because... Okay, or then, pour, plus one verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form, okay? So, whether parce que, and then you just start a sentence, or then pour, plus a verb at the infinitive form, okay? Let's see now some examples. First question, pourquoi es-tu ici Pourquoi es-tu ici? Okay. Ici means here. Es-tu? Are you? Why are you here? Pourquoi es-tu ici? So the first answer. Parce que. So because. Je suis invité. I am invited. Par. By Nicolas. Because I am invited by Nicolas. Parce que je suis invité par Nicolas. Okay, so normally when, when you start with the parce que, so you want to express the reason why, okay? Parce que je suis invité par Nicolas. All right? And then, other option would be pour passer la soirée. So in that case, passer uh, should be translated like like uh, spend, okay, pour, to spend, pour passer la soirée, the evening, avec, with, vous, you, pour passer la soirée avec vous, to spend the evening with you. And in that case, when you will start your answer with pour, okay, so you will express what will you, you, you will do uh, after that, okay, pour passer la soirée avec vous. Okay, and in that case, parce que, you want to introduce the reason why. Okay, so that's the way we will construct answers when you will ask a question with pourquoi. Okay, où est le cube? Where is the cube? Où est le cube? Okay, so let's see that together. Uh, so here, first situation. Here, 
ok So this is le cube and this is le cylindre, ok So just to make it clear because that's the things we'll use uh, to introduce, well, the prepositions. Le cube est sur le cylindre. So you can see it's on, ok So sur le cylindre. Okay, and there is contact here. Okay, it's quite important. Second option, same thing, but it's basically under here. Le cube est sous le cylindre. Okay, le cube est sous le cylindre. Don't pronounce the final S. And then this OU combination of vowels is pronounced OU. Okay, sous, sous. Le cube est sous le cylindre. All right? Then, here, no contact. And that's really important. Okay? Le cube est au-dessus du cylindre. So let's repeat it. Le cube est au-dessus, final S not pronounced here, au-dessus du cylindre. Okay? Then, same, situa same, same situation, sorry, but then the opposite, so it's here, and no contact here, you can see no contact. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre, okay? Au-dessous, final S not pronounced, du cylindre. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre, all right? So, here... I've been putting the plural form because we've got two here. Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. So, next to, okay? Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay? Gauche, left. On the left, off. Le cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Ok. Then the next one. Droite, obviously it's right, on the right. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Ok. In front of. Le cube est devant le cylindre. Le cube est devant le cylindre. And now, behind, it's not possible to see it, that's the reason why. Le cube est derrière, so behind, le cylindre. Le cube est derrière le cylindre. So I've been taking away the color just to, to show you that it's inside, okay? So in, le cube est dans, so in, le cylindre. Le cube est dans le cylindre. Les adverbes de lieu. So really useful. And we're starting right now. So the first one that we'll see. So I've been putting... Each time the English first and then the French version here. Okay, so here. <laughs> so I was re I won't read the, the 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 English one. I will focus on the on the French one if that's okay with you. Ici. Ici. Okay. Then. Là. So remember, you've got this accent, but well, you don't pronounce it. Okay, so it's là. Là. Oops. Là-bas. Là-bas. Remember final S not pronounced. Là-bas. Loin. Loin. So remember when you get this combination. O-I-N. It's loin. 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 Okay. Loin. All right. So let's see them one more time. Ici. Là, là-bas, 
loin. Ok Devant. Final T not pronounced. Devant. Devant. Derrière. So if you look carefully, you've got E here and then double R. So it will open the sound of this E and you should pronounce it E. Ok De. Derrière. Same thing here. You've got this E accent grave. E. Derrière. Ok Don't pronounce the final E. Derrière. Ok Final S not pronounced. Dessus. 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 Dessous. Dessous. Final S not pronounced here. Dessous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Devant. Derrière. Dessus. Dessous. Ok. Dedans. Final S not pronounced. Dedans. Dedans. Dehors. Ok, so remember, final S not pronounced, and then this H in French doesn't exist phonetically, so you don't pronounce it. Dehors. 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 En haut. En haut. Ok, final T not pronounced, and then this H, as previously, you don't pronounce it, so this is O. En haut, en haut, en haut, en bas, final S not pronounced, en bas, en bas, ok? Quelque part, don't pronounce the final T, quelque part, quelque part, autre part. Autre part. Autre part. Ailleurs. Look, final S not pronounced, and then you've got this y, y, y sound. Ailleurs. Okay, so I, sorry, I insist a little bit too much, maybe, but still, let's read it normally now. Ailleurs. Ailleurs. Okay. Autour. Autour, autour. Ok, so repeat them one more time. Quelque part, autre part, ailleurs, autour. Comment exprimer, sorry, comment exprimer l'obligation. So, when you must do something, well, there is a verb for that, to express, to express must, and this is falloir. Falloir, okay, falloir, and then you will have two options, the first one will be il faut, so you get to remember that falloir is what we call verbe impersonnel, okay, because there is only one form and it's il, third person of the singular, il faut, okay, so uh, je, tu, nous, vous, etc., they don't exist for falloir, it's only il, ok, il faut, and then the verb coming after will be at the infinitive, ok, so that's the way to express to must, ok, and then, or to have to if you want, il faut, ok, same form, but then you will add after that un nom, a noun, ok, so whether a verb at the infinitive form or then a noun. So we'll see a few examples now. So the first scénario, as we would say in French, is falloir plus infinitif. Okay. So here, il faut respecter les règles. All right. Il faut respecter, so to respect, les règles, the rules. Il faut respecter les règles. All right, and then another option. So I've been putting here and here the two parts of the negative form. Il ne faut pas fumer. Fumer is to smoke. 
ici, here. Il ne faut pas fumer ici. Okay, so now we'll see the way it works with noun, a noun. And here, for instance, il faut. So still, il faut, remember, as I said, uh, it's only il faut, so it's a verb impersonnel. Okay. Une carte d'identité. Il faut une carte d'identité. Second example here. Il faut un parapluie, umbrella, un parapluie, car, because, il pleut. It's raining, it rains. Il faut un parapluie, car il pleut. Les adjectifs ordinaux. Les adjectifs ordinaux, so in English it would be first, second, third, fourth, etc., etc. So we'll see how they go in, uh, in French. And so we'll start with the first, okay? And as usual in French, remember, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, okay? So each time we'll have here and here the masculine form and the feminine form. Here, that's the way you can see them written when you get to make them short, okay? So they can be written like that, okay? So we'll pronounce them. Le premier, so the first, le premier, la première, le premier, la première, okay? Then, le deuxième, la deuxième, so in that case it's only the le and la, that will be different because deuxième will be the same if you look at them, okay? Then, same thing here, le troisième, la Troisième, le troisième, la troisième, ok Le quatrième, la quatrième, le quatrième, la quatrième, le cinquième, la cinquième, le cinquième, la cinquième, le, cinquième, la cinquième. le Sixième, la sixième, le sixième, la sixième, le septième, so remember we don't pronounce this P here, le septième, la septième, ok, le huitième, remember H doesn't exist, huitième, huitième, la huitième. Le neuvième. Neuvième. So it's V here, remember. V. Vième. La neuvième. Le neuvième. La neuvième. Le dixième. So remember, if, even if you've got this Z X here, you pronounce it Z. Dixième, dixième, same thing as we had here, sixième, okay? Le dixième, la dixième. Le verbe partir, partir means to leave, okay, at the present form. So we see this verb because uh, this verb is normally quite useful. And then uh, it is not regular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs. So it's always good to see the conjugation together, okay? So the first form is je pars. So final S not pronounced, je pars. Tu pars, same form, you can see here and here. So final S not pronounced, tu pars. Il, elle, part. Final T not pronounced, il, elle, part. Okay, so you can see that it's par, sorry, par, par, and then par, okay, so the same phonetical form for these persons, but then obviously and of course for nous, it will be different, so classic ending, O and S, you don't pronounce the S, you just have this on, on sound, nasal, nous partons, nous partons, 
okay then for vous classic ending for vous as well a z but then you pronounce it e vous partez vous partez okay and the last persons il elle part remember classic ending e n t but then you don't pronounce them part part okay so let's repeat them again je pars tu pars il part elle part nous partons vous partez ils partent elle part Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll discover together how to conjugate at the present form le verbe venir. So, venir means to come. Okay, so it's quite useful and especially it does belong to the third group of verbs. So, it's not regular. So, for the present form it's quite useful to spend few minutes just to see the conjugation together okay so we'll we'll start right now first form je viens final s not pronounced je viens remember i e n yen yen je viens okay tu viens final s not pronounced tu viens okay then il, elle, vient. Final T, not pronounced. Il, elle, vient. Okay? So, je viens, tu viens, il, elle, vient. Phonetically, it's the same form. Okay? But then, for nous, it will be a bit different. O, N, S, remember, classic ending for nous, at the present form. Final S, not pronounced. So, you will get the sound. Venons. Nous, venons. Nous, venons. The nom. Okay? Then, classic ending for vous, a Z here, and then you pronounce it E, vous, venez. Vous, venez. Okay? And the last one here. So you've got this double N just after the E, so it will change a little bit your pronunciation. You will have to pronounce this E like E, E. Okay? Il. Vienne. So remember this classic ending e n t for the third person of the plural is here, but phonetically doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Vienne, vienne. Okay. Il vienne, elle vienne. All right. So let's see the form one more time. Je viens. Tu viens. Il vient. Elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So, venir is quite important. Be sure to remember it by heart. Please, 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 s'il vous plaît. Uh, and then, when you're ready, you can go at the following address to find the next lesson. Okay? And then more material here, imagie.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Les pronoms COD. Okay, so no stress, but still it will be quite important. Okay, les pronoms COD. So we'll take first a sentence. Okay, so it's a question and it's Tu regardes la télévision. Okay, so Tu regardes, regardez, is to watch la télévision. So if we look at this question, okay, and then we want to define all the elements, the first thing that we've got in this sentence is tu, okay, so it's here, and it's sujet, so the subject of the sentence here, okay. Second part that we've got here is regarde, okay, regarde here, and it's the verb, okay, that you've been conjugating, it's a s just because it's two, all right. And the second part, or the, sorry, the, so the third part here. So the la last part, la télévision. So la télévision, that's what we will call complément, okay, because it's a complement, it will complete the sentence here by giving some information. It's objet, 
it doesn't have anything to do because it's uh, la télévision, okay? So it's not an object like that, but it's what we call grammatical object, okay? And we say that it's direct because you don't have any preposition between the verb and this complement, okay? So no preposition, so it's direct, okay? So why do we say that it's quite important to use les pronoms COD just because when you've got a question so if someone is asking you to regard la télévision okay the first option would be oui je regarde la télévision so of course it's possible to repeat I mean this part la télévision okay but then if we are honest then in most of the cases we won't repeat la télévision in that case we will use what we call pronouns okay just to avoid repeating this word okay so let's see these pronouns together so as usual we will have the difference between the masculine the feminine and the plural okay in that case here we'll start with the masculin singulier masculin singulier will be first le or then, as usual, if we've got a vowel coming after, the E will disappear, so it will be L apostrophe. Okay? Le, or then L, like that. Okay? If it's feminine, and at the singular form, so we're talking here about the third person of the singular, it will be LA. Or for the same reasons as previously, L apostrophe, if you get a vowel after. Okay? And then for the plural form, so here we're talking about the third person of the plural, then it will be LE. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. So for the masculine singular form, it's LE. For the feminine singular form, it's LA. Okay? And then if they are followed by vowels then you take a uh, and a uh, away and then you get this l okay and for the plural form here it's le all right so let's see that in action now so if you get the same question tu regardes la télévision all right so now we've got all the elements so we know that tu was the subject Regarde the verb, la télévision, complément d'objet direct, and that's the thing we want to replace. We don't want to repeat la télévision, okay? So first, what do we need to do is first to spot the gender of the word. We know that la télévision is feminine, okay? So we've got all the keys necessary. Oui. Je la regarde. So, as I said a long time ago in the lesson, remember that in French, the pronouns, like this one for instance, are coming before the verb. So that's the reason why you will have this la here before the verb. Oui, je la regarde. Okay? Let's take another question. And here you get Tu vas regarder la télévision. So what's the difference between the previous question and this question? Well, this is, and we saw that in a previous lesson, uh, I guess it was on this unit, so you can check it if you're not sure about that. That's what we call the futur proche, so the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. You are going to watch. Okay, so that's the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. Okay. And then here, if you look carefully, well, you've got two verbs. And that's the important thing here. So if you will have a structure with two verbs, and then you want to use a pronoun, this pronoun will come always 
before the second verb. Like here, oui, je vais la regarder. Okay? So I'm not telling you that it will come between the two verbs because you can have many things between these verbs. Okay? So focus on this idea that it will come before the second verb. Oui, je vais la regarder. Okay? So, we'll see that les pronoms, complément d'objet direct, can replace all the persons. So, for the first person, it will be me. Second person, it will be te. Third person of the singular, so the one we saw, le, for the masculine form, and then la, for the feminine form. First person of the plural, nous. So basically it's quite easy to memorize this one, to remember it. Same thing here. Second person of the plural, vous. And then third person of the plural, les. Alright, so me, te, le, la, nous, vous, les. All right? So we'll see now a few examples. So the first one, il me regarde. So if you want to say that he is looking at me, il me regarde. Okay? So remember, as I said previously, these pronouns are coming before the verb. Okay? Il me regarde present form, only one verb, you just put it before. Il me regarde. Il te regarde. So he's looking at you. Il te regarde. Il le regarde. Il la regarde. He's looking at him, he's looking at her. Il nous regarde. Il vous regarde. Il les regarde. Okay? It's not that difficult. When you, when you try to remember, well, first, of course, the, the pronouns, and then this idea that it will come before the verb, well, honestly, it's not that tricky. Okay? Uh, I've been putting the same sentence, but then at this near future form. Okay? So just to show you, if you forgot it, that it should come before the second verb, okay? So, il va me regarder. So, he's going to watch me, hein, or to look at me, okay? Il va me regarder. Il va te regarder. Il va le regarder. Il va la regarder. Il va nous regarder. Il va vous regarder. Il va les regarder. Les pronoms C-O-I. Okay, les pronoms C-O-I. So, uh, well, let's say that it's the second part of uh, les pronoms C-O, complément d'objet. Okay, so if you didn't watch the previous lesson, uh, well, maybe it would, be, it would be better to to do so, so that you could understand maybe more clearly the, 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 the whole thing. Okay, but then still we're starting right now. So, les pronoms complément d'objet direct. So, we'll start with a, une question, a question. Okay, so we'll see. It's a basic question. Okay, you get, tu parles à ton frère. Okay, parler is to talk. Tu parles, you talk, to your brother, à ton frère. Okay, so if we have a look at the elements in this sentence, the first part, or the first element is tu, okay, and that's the subject of the sentence, tu, all right, then the second element is parle, okay, and that's the, the verb, so it's ending like that because you've been conjugating these verb according to tu, okay, but it's a verb here, and then we've got this last part here, à ton frère, so that's what we call complément, so it will 
come to complete the sentence, okay? And it's objet, okay? So be careful, it's really what we call a grammatical object. So it's not an object because in that case, it's a good example because it's a person, okay? But then it's a grammatical object and it's indirect because you've got this preposition a here, okay? So in the previous uh, lesson, we saw the direct ones, okay? They were without any preposition, okay? But then in this lesson, it's indirect because you've got the preposition a here, okay? And it will change the things. So let's see the question. You can ask the question, so it's the same. Tu parles à ton frère? Okay, and then the answer that you could give, of course, would be Oui, je parle à mon frère. But let's say that in most of the cases in French, we won't repeat this à mon frère part. Okay, we'd rather use pronouns just to avoid repeating this complément d'objet indirect. Okay, so we'll see how they go. As usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form. Okay, and here, just to start, we'll start with masculine singular. Okay, masculine singular form will be lui. Okay, ui, ui, lui. All right. Féminin singulier, so feminine form and the singular form here, it will be lui. <clears throat> so it's quite easy to memorize, to remember, okay, because it is the same form for the masculine and the feminine form, okay? And then for the plural form, so third person of the plural, to be more precise, it will be leur, okay? So masculine singular, third person of the Singular, lui. Féminin singulier, feminine singular form, third person of the singular, lui. And then the plural form, third person of the plural, leur. Okay? Let's see now the same question. Okay? Tu parles à ton frère. Okay? And the idea in that case, of course, is to avoid repeating this part here, so complément d'objet indirect, and to replace it with the pronoun, okay? So first we know that it's indirect because we've got the preposition here. We know here that it's masculine because it's brother, okay? And then we've got the information here because it's ton, all right? So we've got all the elements just to reply using the pronoun. Oui. Je lui parle. Okay? So the only thing you should really um, think about here is the position. So you should remember, as I said previously, that the pronouns in French will be placed before the verb. So je lui parle. Oui, je lui parle. All right? And then we could have, well, basically the same question, but then this question would be like it is here at the near future. So if you didn't see the lesson regarding the, the near future, uh, maybe it would be uh, more useful for you to, to watch it, but still the near future, it's a way to construct the future, but at the present tense with the, the verb aller, to go, you are going to, speak or talk okay to your brother okay so you are going to but then the the important thing in that thing in that case is that you've got two verbs okay you've got aller here to go and then you've got parler to speak or to talk okay and when you've got two verbs then for the pronoun that you would like to use you will have to put it just before the second verb Oui, je vais lui parler. Okay, so I'm not telling you that uh, it should be between because 
that's the case here but then between these two verbs you could put many many things okay like adverbs or other things okay so remember that this pronoun lui should be before the second verb all right so now we'll see these pronouns but then for all the persons okay for the first person of the singular it will be me second person of the singular te then third person like we saw so masculine and feminine i only put one so lui because it's the same first person of the plural nous second person of the plural vous third person of the plural leur okay me te lui nous vous leur all right so let's see examples now so he's talking to me il me parle okay remember me and then before the verb il me parle he's talking to you il te parle il lui parle i don't know why lui is still white <laughs> well maybe it was a mistake for my yeah it is a mistake it should be it should be arranged but then still il lui parle okay il nous parle il vous parle il leur parle all right il me parle il te parle il lui parle il nous parle il vous parle il leur parle okay so these examples are with one verb okay and then i've been rewrite rewriting the same same um sentence but then at the near future okay with the two verbs and then we can see how they go now il va me parler he's going to talk to me il va me parler so remember you know me before the second verb il va te parler he's going to talk to you il va lui parler he's going to talk to her or he's going to talk to him okay il va nous parler he's going to talk to us il va vous parler he's going to talk to you il va leur parler he's going to talk to them okay il va me parler il va te parler il va lui parler il va nous parler il va vous parler il va leur parler Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon M. And in this lesson we'll see how to conjugate together le verbe vouloir. Vouloir means to want and uh, it belongs to the third group of verbs in French, so irregular. So that's the reason why I think it's quite good to see the conjugation at the present form together. So here it goes. Vouloir, first person je veux final x not pronounced je veux tu veux final x not pronounced the same form il veut final t not pronounced elle veut okay so here so far we've got one phonetical form it's the then for nous classic ending o n s don't pronounce the s just pronounce the on nous voulons nous voulons same thing here classic ending a z for vous but then you pronounce it a vous voulez vous voulez vous voulez and the last one here a u a and then a n t classic ending but then you don't pronounce it so you get veulent veulent ils veulent elles veulent Ils veulent, elles veulent. Okay, so let's repeat it one more time. Je veux, tu veux, il veut, elle veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, ils veulent, elles veulent. So that's it for this lesson. It was a leçon M. Uh, well, you can find more lessons right here. 
Imagier is the name of the channel on YouTube and then more material can be found there at imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Le verbe savoir. Savoir means to know and it's quite useful. And uh, But then it is uh, irregular so it belongs to the third group of verbs so it's quite good to see the, the way to conjugate it together okay at the present form and we'll see it right now okay so let's start now je sais okay final s not pronounced and then you get this a e a okay je sais sais okay tu sais same form final s not pronounced tu sais il sait final t not pronounced elle sait so, one phonetical form so far. Nous savons. So, classic ending for nous, O-N-S. You don't pronounce the final S. Nous savons. Nous savons. Okay? Then, vous savez. Classic ending for vous, a Z, but then phonetically it's E. Vous savez. Savez. And then, il, here, classic ending for il and l at the plural form, e, n, t, you don't pronounce it, so you get the sound sav, v, 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 sav, okay? Il sav, elle sav. So let's see that one more time. Je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait, nous savons. Vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Il y a, so we saw it in a previous lesson quite shortly. So, il y a means there is or there are. But then in French, we will have only one form, il y a. Okay, so let's see, for instance, here a question. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin? Dans le quartier. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a? So, is there un magasin, a shop, dans le quartier, in the neighborhood? Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? Alright. So, the answer would be, oui, il est juste ici. Yes, it is right here. Oui, il est juste ici. Okay, so in that case, we've been using this il y a, there is, okay, just because un magasin, well, it's singular, okay, so it's basically there is a shop, there is something, okay, let's see now, here, same thing, il y a une piscine, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, il y a une piscine dans cette ville, all right, so you can see that in the first example, I've been using this S que. You remember, we saw that previously, that you can add if you want to ask a question, okay? Or then it's possible here just to keep the same order. There is, il y a, okay, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, in this town, okay? But then, don't forget to raise your voice at the end because it's a question. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Okay, just a little bit to make it clear that it's a question. Okay, so answer, oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. À côté, remember, it was next or near. Okay, and then la mairie, city hall. Oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. Alright, so in both cases here, il y a, just because it was masculin singulier, okay, and then here, il y a une piscine, féminin singulier, all right? And we'll see now the other option that we would have to ask correctly the question. So first, look at it. Il y a... Actually, you should change the order and put it like that. And the way you will pronounce it is y a-t-il? Y a-t-il? Okay, so that's the correct form to ask a question with il y a, so the formal form, if you want. And then, des toilettes, here it's the plural form, okay, toilets, okay. So, it doesn't really change because it will stay il y a, 
okay but then here of course the order is changing so that's the reason why it can be a bit tricky to to notify the the, the fact that basically it doesn't change even if it's plural here okay dans ce restaurant in this restaurant y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant Okay, and then the answer, oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, droite, remember, it was on the right. À droite, on the right, just on the right. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, so to re resume the whole thing, remember this il y a will be used, so for there is, so like here, un magasin, a shop, so it's the singular form, okay. Or then here as well, il y a, there is, une piscine, a swimming pool. But still, it will be also used as like that, il y a, okay, or then in the other order here, for the plural form, okay? It doesn't change. So that's one interesting thing in French. For once, it's easy. It doesn't change. Il y a plus singulier, or then il y a plus... Pluriel. Okay?